a serious picking lick and it has three over four. And what does that mean? That means that the phrase itself, the basic part of the phrase is three notes. But I'm putting it over a division of four. These are sixteenth notes that I'm playing. So the, the speed of it is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But over that I'm playing the three note pattern. So when it restarts, it starts in kind of an odd place. But if you do it enough times and end it right, it all works out in the end. And you can hear how it works. It goes one, two, three, four. As long as I end it there, everything is cool. And then I'm going to take the whole thing down a half step. And how can you do that? You know, if you take things down a half step, usually it makes them horribly out of tune. But somehow this one sounds good. The reason it sounds good is that if we play this beautiful chord here, it's a D9 barred with our third finger, first finger there on the fourth fret, and then our second finger playing the root. Those notes sound really nice over that chord. So we go from our A to our D9. Like magic, those notes seem to work out. And then to spice it up, the next time I did it, I added the ninth. Ooh, that's a nice one. And the next one. And that one's actually the fifth. So I'm adding some extra notes to give it even more color. The technique for this is really a great picking challenge and really useful to build for your picking technique. And the reason is because we're starting this three note phrase with a downstroke, doing alternate picking, so we're doing down, up, down. There it is. Not too bad. But because we're doing alternate picking and it's a three note phrase, the next time we do it, everything is reversed. Everything that you once knew is now backwards, because the next one's going to start with an upstroke. So we still have that motion, that constant strumming motion that we're used to, and that's the thing we're going to rely on the most. But we somehow have to lock it up to a three note pattern that causes us to have to do basically different strokes in relation to the left hand part. So let's look at it again. We're going to go down, up, down, up, down, up. That's the thing. Now, I can't think that fast. You know, I wanted to explain it to you, but when I'm playing, I'm not thinking of it in those terms. Basically, I just try to keep that motion going. So my hand is just keeping in that strumming motion, down, up, down, up, down, up. But I have to aim for the right strings. So the best way to do that is just slow it down. and keep this motion going with your right hand. I'm sort of exaggerating it to make sure I get it right, to make sure I get the downstrokes in the right place and the upstrokes in the right place. Let's try it again. Three, four. Then a half step. So this motion with the right hand I'm kind of curious to see, as I speed it up, if that's still there or if I have to make it smaller. Let's see. Yeah, definitely as I speed up, the motions get smaller in this case, and it becomes more of a wrist motion. But I think initially, to get the coordination, it's good to keep that, that motion going, just almost like a strum.
That'll give you the coordination. You can also try those high notes. That's the third finger. And that one's on the, uh, with your third finger is... put those chords in between. And these accents are interesting because it, we're still doing the strumming motion. But we're accenting down, up, down, up, down, up. a good technique to get used to that, where we still have that flowing rhythm of the strum underneath it all, but we can choose accents, whether they're downbeats or syncopations, based on what we have in our, in our head, what we want to hear. The other chord I'm doing, of course, is thumb chord, and I'm doing the seventh, minor seventh. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm also doing, or sorry, let's see, what are those notes? And the major third. One, two, three. So that's our seventh, A7 chord. this out together because I'm only one guitar player so I can't play these things together but I do have access to some overdubs so I'm gonna lay down a rhythm track and then I'll play the solo over the top and you can hear how it sounds all right so here's a medium tempo of our rhythm and I'm gonna play the solo over the top so you can hear how the two fit together here we go going to do a fast version. So uh, let's crank up the tempo and see if I can make it through this one. Fantastic. So you can check out those backing tracks as well on the site, play along, and really lock that into the groove. That's a great riff.